Hello, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Teresa Paworski, and I'm the Area Director for Business Development for Civitas Senior Living. November is Diabetes National Awareness Month. Um, during this time, it's our mission to spread awareness and importance of sharing education regarding diabetes. Um, I have the pleasure of being in the company of one of our amazing nurse practitioners who's here at Long Creek Assistive Living and Memory Care. Hi, my name is Bari Oderende. I'm a family nurse practitioner for Jabari Healthcare. I'm one of the visiting physicians at Long Creek Assisted Living. Thank you for having me. Great, right, thank you so much. Um, so when you think of Diabetes Awareness Month, what comes to your mind? So um, Diabetes Awareness Month pretty much means, you know, a month where we start to educate patients on the causes of diabetes. It's just a, a more of education on what diabetes is, how to prevent it, and you know the signs and symptoms for diabetes. Great. Yes. Great. Well, thank you so much. Um, so when you uh, talk about the different types of diabetes with your patients, um, what's some of the things that they should be aware of? So we have three major types of diabetes. Okay. We have pre-diabetes, we have type 1 diabetes, okay. and we also have type 2 diabetes. Now pre-diabetes is if you have so much blood in your uh, sugar and it's not enough to be diagnosed with the full-blown diabetes. Okay. Well, type 1 diabetes, a lot of people are born with type 1 diabetes, it just basically means your parents pancreas is not producing enough insulin. While type 2 diabetes, your pancreas is producing some insulin, but it's not enough, you know, to help regulate the blood sugar in your bloodstream. So those are the three types of diabetes that we deal with. Okay, great. Um, so what is the best way to identify signs and symptoms of type 2 diabetes? It feels like that's the one that's the most common that we hear about. Yes, it is. So for type 2 diabetes, you can have, like, there's some signs and symptoms include um, increased hunger, thirstiness. Um, some patients may feel like numbness and tingling in their fingers and their feet. Um, it could even be as a result from like blurred vision, you know? Um, and then also we have something called ketones that are found in the urine and you can only find it when the urine is tested. Sometimes we just do a urinalysis and we find ketones in the urine. So that's a sign for, you know, uh, type two diabetes. Another major sign is whenever we do like blood work, the blood sugar level, what we call the glucose level is elevated. So anything above like 125 is considered type two diabetes. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, that's helpful. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Um, and so, can you share any suggestions that you maybe talk to your patients about for lifestyle management um, that it could help them for prevention? Um, and just kind of lifestyle management for diabetes. Absolutely. So what we try to teach patients is for the prevention for type 2 diabetes especially, um, you kind of have to do exercise. Okay. So, and another thing is I noticed some of our patients don't like to drink water. Water is your best friend. Yeah. Uh -huh. So water, and then if you have to do tea, do like unsweetened tea okay. instead of the regular, you know, sugar-filled tea. Mm -hmm. And then also um, another thing is black coffee. Okay. So if you have to do coffee, because a lot of my patients love their coffee in the morning. I'm a coffee drinker yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. But yeah, I, I try to advise them do black coffee. So kind of like drinks that are not so sweet, you know, prevent concentrated sugar like dried fruits. Mm -hmm. So that would help reduce the sugar in your blood. Okay. Yes. Yeah, that's helpful. Okay. Yes. I think of like diabetes, I think of like um, their sensitivity with like their feet, podiatries, socks. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. Do you want to maybe talk about that? Or maybe like when you refer them to a specialist? Mm -hmm. So for type 2 diabetes, one of the biggest things is whenever a patient has diabetes, we always have to assess your feet because whenever they have uh, stuff like an ulcer or a wound, it puts them at risk for getting their feet amputated if it's not treated okay. properly. So we do have them, instead of having a regular nurse or a regular person just cut their toenails, we have them go to a podiatrist, okay. which is a specialist to make sure that they take care of their toenails because sure. any kind of poke or any form of wounds can is for someone like without diabetes any kind of wound would heal easily mm -hmm. but for type 2 diabetes patient those wounds are at risk for turning into ulcers okay and it could progress really fast so that's why we have a podiatrist 
check their feet, cut their toenails, and make sure that they're not at risk for getting their feet amputated. Sure. Yeah. Because sure. it, it doesn't heal as fast as a patient that doesn't have type 2 diabetes. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the major reasons why we check their feet. Okay. And then there are reasons for what we call like neuropathy, which is the okay. numbness and tingling, and then there are more pain. So again, we have to check to make sure their pain is under control. Okay. As, as the weather changes, like now it's yeah. really cold. It, I, I noticed with some of my diabetes patients, they're in more pain. So okay. that's kind of like a signal to, hey, let's check your blood sugar. Let's make sure okay. everything is regulated like it's supposed to. Sure. So, okay. Okay. But it's pretty interesting how, you know, something like a little cut can progress into something more serious if it's not well managed. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. That yeah. makes sense. Yes. Okay. Um, what about, um, do you have any conversations with your patients or families um, as maybe their needs continue to increase at home about um, opportunities for progressing into a senior living community? Yeah, I do. Like sometimes when um, I see family members struggling with maybe their parent at home, mm -hmm. maybe they have a parent that's like wandering, yeah. you know, or at risk for, you know, safety. Because I've had some families tell me, hey, this is the reason I want mom to move because we came from vacation and mom was on the streets. So and that's when I started to talk about, hey, this is probably time for them to move to an assisted living facility. Okay. And I make my recommendation sure. based on there, especially if, you know, they're more confused, mm -hmm. like they have dementia, right. or maybe it's progressed to Alzheimer's. Right. So just to kind of like keep them in a safe environment, I would suggest, yes, right. move to an assistant living where you at least have 24-7 care. Right. You know? right. Yeah. yeah. And probably if it's somebody who is having a diagnosis on diabetes yes. and we're trying to manage their diet, and maybe if they're having difficulty at home, mm -hmm. grocery shopping, Yes. Cooking meals, managing that that meal plan. Yes. Um, so I could see that being an opportunity to be able to have assistance with managing their three meals a day and being able to have that extra assistance. That's true, because I've had patients where some of them don't go to the doctors at yeah. all unless there's a problem. Yeah. So and then they end up in the hospital and they find out they have like diabetes or their sugar blood sugar is like above five hundred, which is severe. Oh, right. Yeah. So that would be another reason to say, hey, maybe it's time to move to an assisted living where they can check blood sugar and help manage it the best way they can, especially when that patient is confused. They're not going to know how to check their blood sugar. They're not going to know how to give themselves insulin. So that's another good reason to have a move. Okay, yeah. cool. It's interesting, though. Very okay. interesting. Great, great. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for joining thank us today. You. I appreciate it. I love it. Thank you so Wonderful. much. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, feel free to like the video and share with your friends. Have a great day.